Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Band. Welcome back to 1.5. Now it's been a few days and I have been busy searching once again for somewhere to call home. Uh, and it's taken me, um, well, a few hours, many warp jumps later. But ladies and gents, I think I might have found it. I think this might be it. This is an ocean planet. We are near the northern hemisphere of said ocean planet. And, um, well, it's right on top of one of the largest Promethean deposits that I found on a habitable world so far. Yep, a medium. <laughs> there are two Promethean deposits on this planet, apparently. Um, there are a few of the other ones. Basically, it's got the, mo the main things, iron, copper, and silicon. Uh, it also has an arrest room around here somewhere. And it is it is a a, a large planet. It is a large, so, you know, it's not going to be... Well, it does actually say medium, but uh, it is going to take a little while to get around this thing. I need to obviously scout it out. But the main attraction of this planet is that medium Promethean deposit. Because believe it or not, every planet that I visited, and I visited a few, we'll have a little look at my little... There's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's my warp history. And zipping around all over the place. Um, so I went to a few before I ended up on... It, it, what is this? Uh, Cryody? Or maybe... Sirudi? Maybe? Sirudu. Let's go with that. Sirudu. Sir, Sirudi. Sirudi. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, the point is... Um, yes. I went through many, many planets. Many suns. Always sort of concentrating on M-class, K-class, F-class, G-class suns which have the highest probability of habitable worlds, like your yeah, temperates and, and your oceans and so on and so forth. And uh, every planet that had a Promethean deposit on, the Promethean deposit was either small or very small, or in a stupid place. Um, a small, in a stupid place. Uh, and what I found is, like, I was like, oh, maybe I could find one where there were a couple of small Promethean deposits right next to each other, because that would offset. No, no, nothing like that occurred. Now, in fairness, I didn't obviously visit... Or there, there's far too many suns and planets to visit. But what I did want was something in uh, between, or as, as in between as I could possibly manage, all the various uh, faction territories here. So um, I think I'm pretty central, actually. Between pirates, Polaris, traders, uh, the Brotherhood is out there a bit, the Xerax are out there a bit, and the Creel, well, they're always out there a bit, aren't they? Uh, so we have some pretty sort of short warping stuff to do in order to get to whatever I want to get to. I figure um, if we go and attack the Polaris, then we're going to pee off everyone apart from the pirates are going to love it. Uh, so we could probably still trade with the traders or the pirates. And uh, if we attack the Brotherhood, where well, we already have done <laughs> to limited success, uh, that hasn't really affected my reputations at all, to be honest. I'm still hostile with everybody I'm hostile with. I'm still friendly with Polaris, honoured, in fact. Um, you know... And everybody else hates me, so yeah. Um, I don't really know. It hasn't really done much at all to my standings attacking the Brotherhood. They obviously hate my guts, quite rightly so. Um, but I was expecting the Polaris to to really not be very happy with me either. They don't care. Apparently, they're easy. they're they're good with it. I think mostly with this sort of stuff, if you destroy the blocks, you'll get less reputation or something like that. But we weren't really destroying many blocks. We were killing lots of their robots but yeah so i think if i really want say to become friends with the pirates and go full pirate then i will need to find some polaris asteroids and mine them and then because i don't think the brotherhood own any yet but i know that polaris do then i will be unfriendly with polaris which then limits my trading opportunities except like i said with the pirates so i don't know it's all very complicated and weirdness and i don't even know if i want to be trading that stuff uh i have a bit of stuff to trade collecting from all the loot from the brotherhood including some crew some crew 14 alien crew eight human crew which is what we managed to get from salvaging those pois i did defeat not to mention i also have 132 console decos so times that by about 900 and that's how many credits i'm going to get from selling those bad boys to a colonist and um, I'm hoping that somewhere on this planet, again, I haven't scouted it, so I don't know, is a colonist uh, POI that maybe has one of those settlement traders in it and can buy those those console decos off me and the crew. And uh, Oh, no, I think they, they only sell crew, don't they? They don't buy crew. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, so 
what I want to do now that we have found a planet to maybe call home, and then we are on our own island. It is a slightly bigger island than before we are. Um, I want to set up a base. I want to set up a base right here. Now, I want to set it up as close to, I suppose, this Promethean deposit as practical to do so, so that it's a very, very, very short trip to uh, managing that auto miner. Uh, but the little spit of land that I've landed on, haphazardly landed on, I should say, um, I don't think is going to... Well, it's too lumpy. It's too lumpy, guys. I mean, the, the Leviathan here is sort of... <laughs> it's balanced ever so slightly between the the various hills and stuff. Um, so getting the old Leviathan dry dock on here is going to take a little bit of digging in order to level the ground out. Don't and also, you know, I want to spawn in this new base that I've been working on. I want to show you guys the new scavenger base that I've been working on. So, you know, I need somewhere around here close to this Promethean deposit and subsequently this nice titanium deposit that's right here. Flat enough for the dry dock, flat enough for the new base. So, um, let me grab an SV. I have to run the full length of the ship here. Hello, Mr. Arty Gun. How you doing? Uh, and let's see if we can do a little scout of this this island now that the sun is about to set. And we can continue the rest of the video, as is tradition, in the dark. <laughs> right. Why is that on? No pilot mode for me, thank you very much. Right. Okay. This is a very lumpy bit of ground, isn't it? What are you shooting? found like some predator or something or a golem or oh, like, you're just attacking the little insect thing dudes um well you shouldn't be doing that because it's just a waste of a uh, waste of ammo stop that not that immediately uh so the base i think would probably fit quite nicely on this bit of land this isn't too lumpy okay it's quite lump it's very lumpy it's all lumpy <laughs> everything's lumpy uh, I think this is the main the main issue I think with uh, ocean planets is that they're just incredibly lumpy when they do come to the spits of land that you find like that one over there that's a really lumpy bit how lumpy that bit is over there and then you do get a flat bit like this and it's bloody covered in trees isn't it <laughs> well at least there's not going to be any shortage of plant fiber I may actually um, you know have to consider getting a little hover harvester thing chop them then trees down i think to be honest what i'm gonna have to do in order to get the old dry dock and the new scavenger base in here is do a bit of hard landscaping uh with the laser drills of this particular sv uh she is quite talented uh at drilling so there is an elder's tomb here as well which is another interesting consideration because i mean i'll loot i can loot it once and then it's done but that, that kind of presents maybe an interesting, like, hole in the ground that we could perhaps use as as base something. Something to do with bases. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Like a little underground bunker or something. Anyway, I think what I need to do is maybe... Um, let's see. We need to find the lowest point. The dock here, this is a good little leviathan is here because it, it's like obviously a measuring stick for us. I also got to remember the hut off to one side of this thing. So if we say the hut goes here where that rock is, or thereabouts, um, that's going to collapse into this thing here. Isn't it? Oh my god, this is like, <laughs> it's a bloody nightmare. Um, yeah. Tricky bit. Okay, maybe then along along there along there would be good and the hut is is where the leviathan is currently parked yeah okay and i need to redirect all the solar panels on that dry dock as well because we're in the northern hemisphere so i have to point them down uh but let's say okay that's the the lowest point is is here then yeah with a margin for error we'll level the ship out I don't think you can do it um, with with SVs. With uh, HVs, you can lock them into drill mode. With SVs, they don't have such a thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn auto brake off. Press O. Press the the right mouse key. Uh, the, the sorry, the D key on the keyboard every now and again, and just slowly drill sideways, and hope that. <laughs> 
that sort of gives us a level um, to play with. Now, I'm worried that actually this ship is kind of like sliding along the ground. Yeah, that's not really working, is it? Please tell me I'm not going to get... I'm going to have to get a hover miner in order to do this, I think. So we're going to hop swap the drills from the uh, CX-15 here and, and slap them in the hover miner. Uh, but essentially, I'm going to have to create a flat, east-facing platform here to spawn the dry dock onto. The Leviathan is facing that way. Back of the Leviathan will be sort of back here in the rocks, as it were. I think that's probably easier to do that than try and get it flat spawned on that bit of ground there. Whew, okay. Well, yeah, I got a lot of um, a lot of digging and and fannying about to do in order to get this in, but ultimately that Promethean deposit will be enough to fuel the base along with the solar power consistently and provide a nice consistent amount of fuel to keep the leviathan running and also i need to go get the um the hammerhead as well okay lots to do let's see how i get on now that the sun is setting i will cut the video and uh i'll work through the night and we'll see what we come up with see, the problem with uh the problem with building such a sort of massive structure that is dependent on the flat ground being flat is it takes a long time to flatten the ground and then you end up with weird little things like this as well where the, this little terrain kind of uh, doesn't collapse. Um, and, and this... Silence! This takes a long time in like a regular hover driller. Which I've been using up to a point and then I was like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way of doing this. Uh, you know, creating large swaths of flat ground. Look at this, this is crap. Oh, yeah, this crap right here. This isn't flat, is it? What happened here? <laughs> the thing is, the game gives you this wonderful little mode called drill mode, where you press shift O and it levels and it holds the driller at level uh, to a point, and then the terrain sort of skips a beat or uh, the drills miss something, and then suddenly it's up a bit. So I, I, I had a wonderful idea. Big light bulb moment. It's not my idea, to be honest. I've seen others do it um, plenty of times. I decided to build something. You see, I'm playing without device limits switched on. Away, dinosaurs. Uh, which means I can have an ungodly amount of... Well... Laser drills, for example. Sorry, I'm just slaughtering the local population of raptors. Please stand by. Aggressive dinosaurs, take my aggressive shotgun and shove it up your butthole. Um, so yes. Ungodly amounts of laser drills. Well, there we go. <laughs> little trip to creative mode later. Uh, pretty much spent all my Zoscosium in restroom on all these laser drills. Oh, hello. Are you trying to get into the cockpit? No. No cockpit. Bad dinosaur. Anyway, this thing is brilliant. It's got 20 laser drills. Okay. Uh, let me show you its operation. Okay, it's in drill mode at the moment. So we shift over and you get that little icon in the bottom right corner next to the drill icon. Uh, which kind of looks like a Death Star. That is the icon for it's in drill mode. Uh, and then you tap the fire button. And the drills kind of flash on and then off. And then they stay on permanently. A bit like that. Seriously, more of you. Uh, and then we can press and hold O. Uh, we shouldn't need to, but the terrain does weird things. And then just hold forward. Uh, and it will do a maximum speed of one meter a second, as you can see. Very, very slowly. But just like kind of farming simulator, we just plow the field in a perfect straight line. Now, you want to align this thing up with like east, south, west, whatever directions you need to go. Just keep it to the compass. Because remember, when you're spawning a base in... It's bound to the compass. Um, so you need to build your kind of flat area accordingly. And there we go. That's pretty much it. So at the moment, I'm just kind of chilling out, listening to some tunes while my earth carver, <laughs> my plow, goes to work. Uh, and then it pisses off all the local raptor population. And then you just turn it. 
and uh, and then you go in a different direction of course turning it to uh, well we'll be facing north this time it's like it's very very calming you know all kind of like farming imperion style except carving out huge swaths of a continent in order to land a ship <laughs> So my other challenge now is obviously getting rid of all the, the cock-ups from before when I was using a small little hover miner to try and do this. Ridiculous idea that was. Um, so I kind of need to like just drive it over the lumpy bits and kind of try and smooth them out a little bit. And then, oh and that bit over there as well, uh, we should be good to try and spawn our, our dry dock platform for the Leviathan. And from then... It's moving on to the other bases. I don't really need to go and mine some restrooms of Cozium because I just spent it all <laughs> on this bloody thing. Uh, mind you, I could ch dismantle this once I finished it and just chuck all the drills back in the factory. There's an idea. Is that rock going to be a problem? Yes, that rock is a problem. Um, oh, there you go. No longer a problem. There we go. The Earth Carver. Um, I'll see about getting it onto the workshop um, at some point. It won't be on the workshop at the time of this video. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think so anyway. Unless some miracle has happened. Always worth checking the links down below in the video description. At this time, I don't believe it'll be there. But who knows? I might have actually been good at my job for once. It will be coming soon nonetheless. Anyway, look at that. You see, this is why I chose this planet. That over there, right there. That big bright thing, right? Look at that, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. Sometimes you you play this game so much that all the killing gets boring, and all I want to do is just plow huge fields with the earth carver here, you know? just carving massive chunks out of the rock. Seriously, I should uh, upload this as one of those like really satisfying videos, you know, whether people are cleaning pools or. Uh, mowing a lawn or something I don't know <laughs> oh why is that done that now be very careful to maintain exactly 1.8 sort of meters 1.9 meters height on this thing and it's carved out why oh, it's still bloody lumpy as hell look at that it's all over the shop what the bloody hell's going on turns out what you've got to do is once you've set a height on this thing, you have to watch it like a bloody hawk. Because it just changes as you drive. Look, we're at 4.1 meters now. So even though I'll set it here to ground level, go all the way down to the ground. Okay, pointing directly south. 1.3 meters is ground. Okay, so we'll lift it up to 1.8. Fire the thingies, hold O and press forward, and this should level it to to that lowest part. Yeah, you know, that stuff. So, but now it's dropped to one point six. I got one point seven. You have to watch it like a bloody hawk. Now it's one point six again. Raise it up again. One point eight. So you see, the ground level is just constantly changing. Even though you're uh, you're holding that O key, one point five. Stop it. 1.8 is what I want. Now hold it. 1.8, please. So you get all this lumpiness because 1.4. Because it just could, it just doesn't stay at the same height. For whatever reason. Now I think that is flat enough to spawn. I've still got some lumpiness going on over there, but maybe I could tidy that up with a hand drill or something. In any case, the damn the terrain keeps moving around. Uh, and I'm going to be starving to death soon. So let's see if we can now spawn this in. I just need to move the carver here out of the way. I'm just going to park it over here. This will do. Right. Uh, this is going to be a tricky thing to spawn in because it's so big. And the drone is rubbish, as we know. We all know very well. The drone is poop. Um, and also the damn thing is, is it's almost too big because uh, the hut off to the side is a big problem. Okay, here we go. The Leviathan dried up. Oh boy. Okay, well at least it's around the right way. 
to start off with. I'm going to need to lower it in the ground. Oh, that is sensitive. Say, so move the mouse ever so slightly and off it goes. <laughs> uh, is that good? That looks good to me. Plunk. Look at that. We did skip. We did skip. I did skip. I made a big enough... What is that? Uh, and that must have been an error in creative mode. Uh, I, I, I dug enough that it's, it's not too bad, actually, is it? That's not bad. A little bit of lumpiness. I can figure the lumpiness out. I haven't got my epic drill on me. I will get it. I will get it. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, never mind. Okay, well, the point is it's flat enough. Um, minus some, like, tidying up around here and, and that. Look! Oh, and this as well. I need a... I'll drive a tank off of that. All over. Oh, and that. I'll get rid of that. I can't park the Leviathan on while there's a floaty bit. But my hut is here. My hut is all here. Uh, the solar panels I need to reconfigure to point that way. Um, I don't need to dig this out. Uh, beds here and everything. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Right. Let me get my drill and I'll tidy it up. Look at this, look. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen now. Hang on. Mounting in the way. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, a little, a little heavy on the forward thrust there, sunshine. Are we aligned? Not quite. Other way. See, it's a bloody precision operation getting this thing down here. Quite t twitchy today. That looks aligned to me. Oh, cheeky. That's cheeky, that is. Spot on. Happy days. She's down. She is parked. Look how how at home she looks there. Oh, what a beauty! What an absolute beauty! All right, I went Australian for a second there, mate. Uh, right, <laughs> that's good. Because I'm thinking like, okay, got the dry dock in place now. That's that's like the most important structure. Is somewhere nice and stable for the Leviathan to park. <laughs> It's not, it's not farming, it's not storage, it's not anything like that. No, no, no. It's a nice parking space. That is what life boils down to. It's somewhere nice to park. Yeah, capital ship. Uh, right. <laughs> so comfortable. Look at that. What a beaut. So I'm thinking, right, got a HV hanger at the back of that. And that ramp comes down here. And I dug into the mountain a little bit there. I could expand that quite easily into a nice mountain subterranean HV hangar bay. I don't think I'll turn it into an entire base because, you know, I have one that I want to bring in that I've already built and is already very nice. So we're going to do that. But, you know, a nice convenience little HV parking bay is not a bad idea. Straight into the levee and off you go. Right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Right, did I leave the repair bay is on? Let's turn that off. Um, yeah, I need to reconfigure these solar panels so they point to the south. Uh, but look at that. Look at that. All right. Come on. You know it. It looks awesome. <laughs> so I need now somewhere to put... Uh, what are we we're working on? I've, I need to change its name because Scav Keep is just... That's horrible. It's just a bad name. What about, like... I don't know. Prospect Outpost. That's a little bit nicer, isn't it? <laughs> Scav Keep. <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like a dungeon in Super Mario. Uh, right. <laughs> Prospect Outpost. This is a bit posh for the scavengers, maybe, but, you know, we'll go with it. This is where that is going to go, which means uh, the old carver there is going to have to get back to work. I might even just continue what I've already started there. And bleh, this out over here. Um, I need... Well, actually, I'm a little bit short at the moment on iron. Nine grow plots. Um, some silicon. That's not going to be a problem. 6,000 stone dust. That should be fine. Uh, and then I can spawn it in. I can see how big it is. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's pretty big. Ow! Um... 
So, yeah, but I think I'll probably just continue this line that I've got here. Dig that way. Uh, this is a lot of ground to move. This continues to go up for quite some time. and uh, Until about, you know, here. Hmm. That is a lot of that is a lot of digging, but I think the the earth carver here can do it. I okay, can do it. Let me show you my other little um, machine that I I started this whole endeavor with. Is the groundhog? Groundhog's actually in the wrong color scheme at the moment. Completely the wrong color scheme. You're an embarrassment. Uh, but yeah, so I, this is see this is what I was planning to bring in as my little hover miner. It doesn't have the laser drills by standard. I put them on. Jesus Christ! Why didn't I take them off and put them on the Oh, I could have saved myself sick. Never mind. Okay. Ah, oh, so many laser drills. Look at all the laser drills I have. <laughs> I'm just starting a collection. Anyway. Um, yeah, I was going to bring this in. And then it turned out that hover miners are completely bloody useless. Uh, other, unless you're doing this sort of thing. In which case, you want something stupid like that. Which is brilliant. <laughs> just look at, the, look at the amount of land that I cleared. It's amazing. All right. I think I've got the resources to bring in Prospector Outpost. See, I am not. I don't like that either. Prospect, it sounds so poncy and ugh. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Uh, input, we have some iron. And then we have a little bit of iron. And we have some crushed stone that can turn into stone dust. So that's fine. And we've got silicon. That's fine. Grow plots. That's the thing. What's in the fridge? Five. Uh, okay. Okay, I've got plenty of meat though. I think you can turn meat into um, dodgy food, can't you? Spoiled food, plant protein. Oh. Well, I could do it. Stone dust. Oh. Yeah, I could do it. Get in there. Well, how many grow plots was it again? I can't even remember. Just make me like a bunch of that, please, sir. Get on with it. Cool. Ah, oh, there's grow plots, no problem. Okay. Well, that's doing that then. Do some digging. I can turn the shields off. I can turn the shields off on the levee. I think that will save, save us a bit of power, won't it? Levy, you, you're in no danger here, buddy. This is a safe place. A safe, beautiful place. Hang on. Wait, I haven't even spawned a base on here before. Oh, that's alright then. <laughs> I, I assumed there were no Xerax already. Then. It's fine. There aren't any. It's all good. Okay. Back to digging! Well, it didn't quite fit where I wanted it to, I think because um, the dry dock here is technically very large, although that, I suppose, is within the square, uh, whatever, I couldn't get it to go, I wanted it over to the right a little bit more than where it is now, but here we go, um, Prospect Outpost, although maybe might be changing that name to something better, I have no idea what. <laughs> Uh, here it is. Um, let me give you a tour. I've been working on this off camera for a little while now. It is, well, it's it's kind of like a basic-ish base. It has everything you need and space to grow into. It's not overly flashy. That's the whole thing with the scavenger thing. Apart from the levy there, she's just, you know, she's just a show-off. Uh, <laughs> everything else is very, very sort of uh, basic looks like it's made out of parts that have been found and whatnot very used um and this is kind of what i wanted to bring with this base so uh you've got a sort of main uh strip i suppose you call it main strip through the base where you've got various buildings and stuff set aside got a nice little hover hangar bay there sv pad there that's the main kind of building we'll go into that in a second We've got an ammo uh, dump. I wanted so, so I wanted to make it look like a bunker, kind of like um, you know it's heavily shielded and stuff. That is like an ammo pit, got oxygen tanks, and then our, our little generator room over here. So we've got some fuel tanks, and then uh, don't have a lot of like elevators and this stuff. I opted mostly for ladders because obviously they look more kind of rustic and stuff. So we've got generators under, underground there. And then uh, I've got ladders, which are a pain in the ass. There we go. <laughs> I managed to get out eventually. Um, over the way, we've got a nice little crane, which I stole directly from the gold refinery of the Brotherhood. Nab that. Copy and paste. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we've got like a kind of like a cargo area. 
Where we've got 320. Hey, you're not 320. Neither are you. What is going on here? These are all 256. Well, bugger. Um, well, I swear they were 320 when I put the damn thing together. Maybe there's been some update to container extension and stuff. 256. They're all 256, yeah? <laughs> damn it. <laughs> they're supposed to be full size, but uh, whatever. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, we've got the main little building here. So let's go inside here and have a look around. I need to get some power in here. Um, so, yeah, kind of a bit of everything in this one. The production facilities. At the moment, two large constructors, if memory serves. Wow, that was a big lag spike. That was a lot of time waiting for that to open. Uh, fridge, food processor, again, with a... What the freaking... What? There we go. Ladders are very finicky. Uh, ladder up into uh, where we've got some grow plots, the fridge, and uh, a nice little bench for observing. Look at that view, though. That's pretty de decent. That's a pretty decent view. This is what I was hoping for on this planet. Nice view over the ocean. Beautiful. Just uh, over the, the ammo dump there. Lovely. Um, just off the side, there is a little medical area, which looks <laughs> very ropey. <laughs> I think I may have gone overboard with the old rust textures. <laughs> uh, and then we've got a lovely little... Ah, oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a view. <laughs> now that's a view. Oh, yeah. This is what I wanted. Lovely planet. Lovely planet to just chill out on. Um, and that's it. That's, that's, that's this outpost. Except there's more. Oh, yes. There is more, and I missed a bit when I dug this thing out. Whoopsies. Um, welcome to the underground layer section of the base. I've missed loads of little bits of rock, but there we go. We've got them. Probably that one there. Just going to be around doing this for now, for the next half an hour. Uh, right. Core extensions. Um, I think up to tier three, and then room for four more for the T4 extensions over there. Uh, fuel more generators, backup generators and stuff in here. Uh, room in here for deconstructors. And pretty much anything else you want. Take those blocks out and put a shield in there if you like. Not going to need a shield. It's a complete waste of power. In here I can fit two furnaces directly below the SV pad. And, um, and then we go through into the kind of living quarters area. Where we've got lots of nice sort of furniture and, and whatnot. It's a little claustrophobic because there's only one block high, but you know, it does the job. Three quarters, basic, you know, um, toilet facilities, little open plan office. Oh, uh, no, more rock that I missed. And then this goes up into uh, the hangar bay where our hover vessel is currently parked. Uh, but that is not all. No, no, no. <laughs> the tour continues through this door over here we have a corridor that runs the length of the base this one links back up to our core room and then this one links to below the warehouse so these are all container extensions you see uh, there's not a lot of room to expand these down here I could potentially go through that wall there but then I might be going out of the base um, I can't remember if they go underneath, and that might be a point we can expand them into to get them at 320. Um, and then this goes through to our generator room that we saw earlier. And there we go. That. That is it. That is it. Now, yeah, no, there isn't anything else to the base. Um, so, you know, lots of kind of little bits of RP value, like little sort of secret bits. It's very nice underground. You know, there's lots of nice furniture and stuff. Um, and on the face of it, it looks like a junkyard. <laughs> but that is it. That is... Let me get the drone out. Something or other outpost. Another, another build for the scavengers. Four GAC cannons on each corner of the wall and then a flak turret on the top there. Not that I'm going to need that here. Also why I'm not bothering with a shield. Because there are no baddies on this planet. So we can... Uh, we can sit here and we can hoard for as long as we like 
But um, yeah, there we go. Look at the uh, <laughs> the scar on the landscape that I have created. Now this base doesn't have any solar panels because uh, you know you can just add your own when you re when you figure out where you're placing it and where's best for solar panels. So this sort of strip of land here that's empty, I'm going to use to put a nice little another block of fifteen like the um, like the dry dock has over there. Um, and then I uh, yeah I'll put some plants in the the thingy and it should run quite happily on solar power. Once I've added the deconstructors and furnaces and stuff as well, we should be able to get some nice production up and running. There is a titanium deposit I think I've just placed this base on top of. No, I'm good. It's... Oh, uh, it's over there, I think. It's just out past that tower. Um, so we can get some titanium going, and then uh, what I need to do is explore this planet. Figure out where the hell everything else is. I'm really hoping... There is a colonist uh, settlement here on this planet somewhere that we can uh, we can sell stuff to. We also want to play somewhere for the hammerhead to park. Actually thinking about it, that strip of land here would be perfect for the hammerhead. But then where do I put my solar panels? I could put them over there, I guess, where, where the carver is parked. Yeah, I might have a little think about that anyway. Oh boy. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Welcome to our new home. This is fantastic. I love this place. It's beautiful. The weather is always wonderful. It's nice, bright. There's only a few raptors every now and again that kind of get in the way. Nothing's trying to kill me or blow me up or anything like that. It's just, just lovely. It's a lovely little slice of paradise here in Imperion. Very nice. Before I do anything else to the base, though, before I even, like, try and build that sort of stuff. Uh, we're going to go get the hammerhead. How quickly that takes off. Brilliant. Cool. Let me uh, waypoint this first. Um, waypoint. Home. Home. Little house icon. Show on HUD. Yes, please. It's kind of the point. <laughs> uh, yeah, the hammerhead is back at Sigma Fulcrum, which is 21. It's only one jump. One jump. I am not far away from that space station at all. Okay. Now, oh, crikey. Yeah, I did have a little look around this sector before I jumped into it, and it's not terribly... Like, there's not a lot of bad stuff here. There's a few pirate ships loitering, and so on and so forth. However, I wonder if that over there is... If these little white things here are colonist stations. Um, and maybe have some traders on board. Anyway, where is Sigma? Sigma Fulcrum is that side. Okay, let's maybe raise our shields in case we are jumped by pirate scumbags. I don't think we will be, but you never know. All right, Sigma Fulcrum. Let's go get the hammerhead. While I'm here at Sigma Fulcrum, actually, I can see if I can sell some of the stuff that I've got. Uh, it's mostly weapons and whatnot. So, uh, let's see. Ooh, where is it? Oh, am I, am I a ranger? Really? Oh, damn. Now I'm in range. Okay, I might have to do this the old-fashioned way. That's that's a shame. Um, okay, yeah, lots to get through here. <laughs> uh, what if any of these guys are buying crew as well? That would be interesting. They probably weigh far too much for me to carry. Um, okay, well, flamethrowers, assault rifle T2s. Do you know what? Assault rifle T2s. I don't know who buys those. I think I have to put them all in the factory. Multi-tools, T1s, anti-2s, shotguns, miniguns, all the sort of basic weapons. I think these guys buy that sort of stuff. Servant Corp. Hi. Just the parts, please. T2 multi-tools, medium armors, night visions. Okay. So, yeah, I should be able to get rid of some of it, at least. Here she is, look. Patiently waiting all this time. On here, on it, all on her own. Uh, now, now then, <laughs> where are we gonna park you, Hammerhead? Suspect we could probably latch you on just about, maybe over the SV pad. See, can you get a landing gear down there? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. Easy go. Drop me a landing gear, go on. Drop me a landing gear. Ah, stop being so difficult. 
Yeah, tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. It's not really designed to dock CVs to her, so, you know, just kind of have to wing it. Oh, there we go. That's docked. I heard the noise and everything. Awesome. The hammerhead is in tow. CVD, CV docking, baby. Look at that. That's the tr that's the key right there. <laughs> Winner. Okay, I'll get rid of some of the stuff in the trade box. Uh, none of these guys are... Um... Oh, I'm just floating. Power save on, obviously. Um, I've still got a lot of crap, basically. Uh, but yeah, let's get in the passenger seat here. Driver's seat, rather. Uh, Sigma Fulcrum, thank you very much. I guess, I don't know, I might be back one day, possibly, to completely dismantle you, or whatever. But for now, you can live. Let's head home. Our new home. Let's do it. Yeah, and of course, we're going to be coming home to the night. <laughs> As always, <laughs> the sun is going to set. Uh, right, now is that precision operation yet again, and this time in the dark, to landing the levee. Oh, look at this. I'm doing it. I'm doing it without auto brake. Oh, this is going to be touchy. Touchy. I'm over. I need to move over. What if I just... I've just landed on something and I don't know what it was. <laughs> See, I had it in my head that it would be like super silky smooth and like bang on. And it wasn't bad, in fairness. I am down. I'm on a slight wonk. Oh, I'll give you that. I'm on a slight wonk. Need to like move forward a little bit. And then just, yeah, lock it. Lock it in place. Pretty good. I think the the front left, yeah. The the port side landing gear is on the edge. <laughs> Do you know what? It's it's a little bit of excitement in the uh, in the in the day is landing the levee on that la that landing pad. <laughs> Can you imagine if this game had like collisions? I'd hate it if it did because I crash everything. But you know those precision landings would be even more kind of tense, wouldn't they? Any bit of damage in your buggered. Right, hammerhead then. Our little mining ship. Hey, we've crashed. It's fine. We'll uh, we'll let it off. Ignore that. Nothing happened. Nothing to see here. Can't see anything. Hang on. Night vision, please. See, this is what I mean. This little spit right here. Absolutely perfect for the hammerhead. Oh, yeah. No, I've got to build a pad for that, haven't I? So where do my solars go then? That is the big old question now. I right, have to carve out more land. Maybe put the, the the outpost solars right below the landing pad solars. I could carve out more land. It's entirely possible. There's nothing stopping me from doing it. I know, I know. You don't like being turned off because all the oxygen runs out of you. <sighs> Plowing through these bleeding ration packs as always. Um, right, I do actually have an EVA boost on, which is stupid. Well, maybe it's not so stupid. It is only 9 degrees and it would be freezing right now. It's cold on this planet. It's bloody chilly. Right, we need another landing pad. Right here for the hammerhead. And, uh, and then solar panels for the base. I could... It would be a little bit... Yeah, it's a bit fishy. But I could do two long lines of solar panels to get to 15. That they don't divide evenly though, so I'd need three and well that would then go into the walls. Oh, it's all very complicated, ladies and gents. It's all very complicated. Planning out a base that's made of multiple bases. Very tricky. It's thoroughly exciting, I know. But okay, plan. I I am gonna carve out some more land in front of those solar panels. Um except that bit is is also very lumpy. Okay, how, how big a space do I need for a bank of 15? Five lines of three. Actually, probably come up to around about here-ish. Oh, I see that's a fairly chunky bit of land, isn't it? Mind you, could, do you see what I just like carved out <laughs> twice? <laughs> it's no problem for the earth carver. 
Uh, I might need a better name for that as well. It doesn't quite have the right ring for it. Maybe like Earth Cutter. Earth Cutter. That, that sounds better, doesn't it? It's no problem for the Earth Cutter. Uh, the Dicer? Sp I don't know. Apparently I've become crap with names. Help me out, guys. <laughs> you, you lot are rubbish as well. <laughs> what am I asking you lot for? <laughs> uh, right. This thing. Ooh, darkness. Welcome to the Spanish video, everybody. As always, it's bloody dark. Um, now, this thing is going to run out of fuel very quickly here, so let me uh, top it up because... Yeah. Oh, look at my list! My list is stupid now. Uh, Carver. Fuel. Leviathan. Resources. Shablamo. Um, this thing will run out of fuel very, very bloody quickly when the lasers start lasering. The lasers start lasering. Um, okay. Now, who put this freaking hammerhead in the way? Yeah, a pain in the ass this is. Get over the solar panels. There we go. Alright. So we need to be on level with the hammerhead, I think. I don't see much at the moment, but there we go, I think. Right. Position yourself facing perfectly west. There we go. Another little tutorial for you guys. Hold the O key, press shift, Death Star turns on, press the fire button, lower yourself down to 1.8 or thereabouts, so press and hold O and forward, and away we go, more land clearing. Land dug, excellent. Now with the land dug, uh, what we need to do is connect to our outpost, connect to SAS. Prospect outpost. There we go. Uh, and then we head back over here. Hit up F4. Connect to the levy. Blocks and devices is what we want. 991 concrete blocks. 15 solar panels. And 8 capacitors, which I might put somewhere else. Uh, okay, so then... We will place our first block, I think, there. So we're... Oh. Yeah, it does that thing, doesn't it? Is that thing because it's not at the same height as the um the dry dock that just seems a bit odd to me but i suppose it, it's gonna have to do it's uh it's gonna be a bit odd it's gonna be a bit odd ladies and gents um never mind oh now it's not even <laughs> they're definitely not aligned are they <laughs> oh dear it's gonna be very odd it's gonna look a little unsatisfying now isn't it uh, okay, so when we plan out our solar panels, which have to be south-facing, start with this side. One, two, and three. There we go. And then we build our wall around it. And uh, we will have our solar panel. Oh, I'm going to leave. Oh, I need to use the drone. Because Wi-Fi, and that's the other thing I need to do. Well, actually, the Leviathan, I can't really extend the Wi-Fi on that, because otherwise i would just be making the ship bigger. Um, but for all the bases and stuff, I need to put little Wi-Fi nodes around so that we can always access the Wi-Fi of any base wherever we are. Three more. Two. And hopefully this isn't going to collapse on me. Beautiful. Okay. Run this all the way along. Hold control up one. There we go. There we go. Pretty much got our little solar panel um, compound. Now, if I texture it, the same as the uh, dry dock there, they will blend in quite nicely. Uh, and then you'll only notice that they're completely out of alignment with each other if you get if you get close. The solar panels are almost lined up. <laughs> it's almost. <laughs> Not quite. Never mind. Well, there we go. Now it looks just like that solar bank. Lovely. And they're definitely not out of alignment. Perfectly in a line. I mean, look, you can line up white lines if you give it a... Yeah, oh, no, I've lost control of the drone. You can't see anything. Oh, no! Anyway, um... I've also created a little bit of... It's not as nice as the Leviathan's landing pad, obviously. I will maybe touch it up a little bit more later, but there we go. Hammerhead has got a nice little platform to land on. 
all bespoken stuff. Uh, so yeah, look at that. The ramps up the ramps. Yeah, now gonna have to do a nice little precision landing exercise for whenever I bring the hammerhead home now as well. Um, so oh, and yeah, we've got power now to the base now that it's got solar panels and stuff. I'm not sure why that Gatlin tur turret is pointing up in that direction, but whatever. Um, I need to put some ammo in there. Uh, not that there's anything really to threaten this base. I might just leave the guns on Predator just to liven things up a little bit. That's a bit of a rock, isn't it? Where did this come from? There we go. Um, there's sort of roads forming around here. I might just level this all out as well, just so it's kind of not jutting out like this. But I think I'm pretty happy with this, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What do you think of my new home? I like it. I, th I think it's kind of transformed this game from, you know, go around and, and kill everything with weapons of mass destruction to find a nice place to retire, chill out a bit, mine some Promethean, you know, build a stupid thing that removes all the terrain from the universe. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm quite happy with how this thing actually performed. I think it's done a, an absolutely amazing job. It eats power like crazy. It's so hungry. It goes through a full fuel tank in about half an hour. Uh, and it's got about eight fuel tanks in there, so whatever, however much fuel that holds is how much it guzzles up. It's uh, pretty hungry. Um, but considering I just sort of whipped it up on creative mode in about an hour, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Do you like my little RP? Look, it's like a little... The pipe comes along, it chews up all the earth, it chucks it out, and it puts it in the trailer back here. Look, it's a trailer. Yeah, you, know, you want to why it's a trailer? Because it's it's hitched. There, see, trailer hitch and everything. I don't know why. <laughs> I was just like, so I went and built it. I just put the blocks in place, like the drills and the cockpit, and went right now. What the hell do I do with this? <laughs> it ain't gonna look like a sports car, that's for sure. Uh, it's a big bit of uh, excavation machinery, and I like it. The levee is looking majestic AF. Uh, even the hammerhead is looking pretty happy over there, very smug. In his new home my new base that i now need to go through and organize all the storage boxes and offload the leviathan um so that it can go for a nice little kip i might take the garden out of that now um and and put it back for long voyages kind of thing just so i can turn it off at the moment it is just constantly burning fuel uh just keeping the lights on and stuff so this thing should be able to run on solar power almost indefinitely with just like a fridge and like you know some grow lights and stuff it's, it's not really doing much uh, I'll, I'll put constructors and furnaces and deconstructors in there as well but i'll attach them all to signal logic so that it's nice and chill uh when i'm not using it and there we go we should have now some some decent solar power food basically what the objective is here isn't it solar power food and the rest is optional um but you know as i burn fuel i'm also gathering fuel thanks to that medium how is that actually doing thanks to that medium promethean deposit that i've that i did this entire thing for this is all for you mr promethean deposit okay wow <laughs> well you've only burnt one fusion cell and you've managed to get 406 promethean ore that's not a bad return actually um there we go so you're going to be running forever i might i might do some sleeps just to get a nice little bit in the bank once I've offloaded everything. Do some sleeps. And this thing's just running on solar power and I can turn everything else off. Get a bunch of Promethean out of that. Because my deposits don't deplete underwater miners. They don't deplete. So that's infinite infinite Promethean right there. Uh, providing I can keep the fusion cells going. Uh, oh, that's another thing. I need to put some water generators down there. Ah, oh, dear. Still so much to do. Still so much to do. But that is all I'm going to do on camera with you guys today next episode what i would like to do uh, is continue pissing people off uh basically <laughs> who should we piss off next <laughs> we pissed off the brotherhood uh they bit back big time and they were like you know very high level and lots of like angry people shot me a lot uh we could piss off polaris but i am hesitant to do so um just because they're, they're such just good traders, you know? they just got great trade stations and stuff. Still, I've never attacked Polaris before. 
So I think it's a thing. And as by popular request um, from you guys, I think we need to go over to this big purple area here and go piss off the Creel. Uh, after all, you know, I've got a ship called the Leviathan. Um, it should be pretty good at destroying stuff. Well, it is. But it is also... <laughs> it's not the best of fighting ships, is it? It's kind of like a, it's kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, so from a fighting ship point of view... Uh, maybe what we should do before we go to the Creel is look at this thing. This is my favorite fighty ship. Uh, we're a bit short, uh, on some stuff here. So, that, that's a thing. Yeah, I need to get that titanium auto miner set up as well. So, the Ray Tracer is an oldie as well. It's been on my workshop for a while now, but it is an, um, an amazing little fighty ship. Um, you know, it's not a battle cruiser or a huge battleship, but it flies... It flies better than most of my SVs fly. Uh, you know, it is it's so maneuverable. Uh, and it runs rings around anything that, that the game has in the in the PvE world. So, you know, I, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good boat and it just dishes it out like crazy. So we're going to see if we can get the Ray Tracer in for old time's sake. And give her another little run through Creel space. Um, but uh, before we get that, let's see what we can do with the levee here. Uh, but if it's too much for her, then <laughs> we'll just come back here, give her a cheeky repair, and bring in a proper fighty ship. Um, that's all to come. Thank you very much for sticking with me through this very much administrative and diggy diggy episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, nevertheless. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.